This is From Hero to Zero, a show about the misconception of the demise of the music industry. We talk to heroes to make sense of the alleged zero, the music business. Hey guys, how you doing? Good, good to be here. Good to have you here, thank you so much. So, Gus, you, you're award-winning, renowned guitarist, played for Ozzy, Firewind, uh, been guest musician on different albums. Uh, you just released your second solo effort with Gus G, uh, Brand New Revolution. Yes. And um, what I was wondering, I read that you went to Berkeley in 1998 to study music, Berkeley College of Music in Boston. And I was wondering, wow, that was shortly before the digital revolution, before the internet changed the whole music business. Yes. Uh, how did you experience that, being a young musician wanting to, I assume back then you already wanted to become a professional musician, how did you experience that change? Um, well, by the time I started making records, uh, things that were already changing, it was a big, era of mp3.com and all that stuff so honestly I never made records with like million dollar budgets or you know uh, experience like huge sales and like you know the whole excess of the 80s and 90s you know in, in, the, in the music industry it was always for me I was I, I always I was always like a DIY musician um, you know I built everything myself from scratch you know without any like big corporate funding behind me or anything so I'm pretty proud of that actually I have to say that you know considering you know the things that have happened in my career uh, I'm very happy about that because I'm proud because um, it's been very hard it's been a hard long hard road but uh, and it certainly wasn't like an overnight you know sensation or something or success uh, so uh, yeah I take pride in that man um, so I you know I I don't know how things were for, I bet it was, it's harder for musicians that were, you know, before my era, you know, my generation, that were used to all that and all of a sudden they had to see this huge decline and this big change. So for me, it didn't really change anything. I've been, you know, I've been, I've been lucky enough to be able to survive on what I've been doing, you know, and uh, make a good living out of it and have enough amazing fans all around the world that keep supporting, you know. I'm, I'm grateful for that. Sure, great. And artist development is something which, uh, a term which has been thrown around so a lot. Well, it doesn't exist anymore. That would have been my question. Yeah. Well, how do you see it? What's your perception of that? I don't know if there's any record labels or managements that do artist development these days. Maybe once in a while you'll see it with one band that will, you know, they'll put a lot of money behind it and then, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll miserably fail, you know, most times. Because, you know, that's just the nature of the music business. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, how many big tours you get or how much marketing you have it matters of course but at the end of the day you cannot force people to buy music or you know buy a ticket or something um, this is something that has to happen and grow organically and uh, especially these days you know when everybody's like you know music is so accessible and it has devaluated a lot you know uh, people have taken music for granted you know why should I buy this when I can just listen to it on my phone for free instantly so you really have to uh, try twice as hard, you know, at least twice as hard, you know, <laughs> five times as hard. Um, so artist development has become a very, very difficult thing, you know, especially for young artists. Uh, it's, it's almost non-existent, you know, I don't know any record label. I mean, well, most record labels are out of business, you know, or they've become legacy labels, you know, they just stick to their back catalog and release albums from bands from the old times, you know, like already established acts. So, yeah. How, how did you do it? Because obviously, you, if, uh, if I read your, your biography, your career, your discography as well, as a uh, sideman, as a, as a lead guitarist and so on, you actually grew year after year with every record. Well, I played with many something. bands, yes. I played with many bands. I started out playing in bands in Sweden with like Dream Evil and uh, Night Rage, and then I did a brief stint with Arch Enemy in 2005. And, you know, I always had my own band, Firewind. Like in 2005, I decided to focus on that. But you know, it's been like, like a steady thing. Um, you know, year after year, you know, winning one fan at a time, tour after tour. Um, 
you know, I was I was probably one of the last guys that did have that things that so-called artist development. I had a label that you know helped me with tour support and stuff like that. You know, uh, I've had a good relationship with the guys at Century Media for years. I've been there since I was 21 with that label. You know, um, but you know things have changed even for for that label and for everybody. You know, so. Uh, I was like, I was kind of lucky that I, I caught the tail end of all that, you know, and we were able to sell enough records to, you know, to get to where we are today. Um, but, you know, record sales today don't mean anything, really, you know. It's become a thing where it's like, streams are the new record sales or something. But the, the sad part is that nobody, the artist doesn't get paid for the streams. They don't see any money out of that. You know? So the business model has changed and you have to adapt? Totally, yeah, totally. I mean, it's um, it's wild, wild west out there, really. You know, there's no rules, really, um, to how you're going to construct your business. I mean, look at U2. They gave away their album. You know, you had the U2 album on your iPhone, on your, on your, on, sorry, on your, um, on your iTunes, whether you liked it or not. So anybody can do whatever the hell they want today, you know. Um, so, I don't know, There's a lot of middlemen have been cut out of, from the chain, you know. But you have to adapt to that, you know. It's like, it was uh, Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins who said that branding is becoming more and more important for artists today. Um, do you think about branding when you create something new, when you do something, or do you have someone to help you with that? Um, no, I've been fortunate, I mean, I think about it, but I, I when I create music, that's for me that that's the most, still the most pure and sacred thing, you know. Like, I think about branding how to sell something after I'm happy with my music. If I'm not happy with something, I cannot really go out there and try to convince people to buy it or, or listen to it, you know. Um, it has to come from the heart, so that has to remain, the, the you know, pure. Um, I don't, I don't know what other bands do. I don't have like, you know, my music doesn't have a concept about war or fairies or, you know. Our music is just, you know, straight rock and roll or classic hard rock or metal. Uh, there's still enough fans around the world that dig that, you know, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, for me, it's all about the quality, the quality of the content. Uh, it's more about that rather than the, you know, all the stuff around it. It's more about the music rather than, um, you know, the image. The image has to be there, but that's, that comes like after the music has, you know, after the content is there. So once you have that, then you think about branding. How are you going to go out there and, and package this? You know, you have to think about these things, you know, um, especially in heavy metal. You know, it's, uh, it's such a, it's such a, you know, this genre is full of, you know, gimmicks, you know. So, um, I mean, you know, all the big bands that we grew up listening to, they have a gimmick, you know, to, you know Iron Maiden or Priest, all those guys, you know. So it's like, you know, it's part of the whole game. And fans love that. Yeah. Sure. Nowadays, with social media or online, web, online in general, um, you can reach fans faster and by yourself, if you want to, of course, as an artist. Um, you have a huge following on Facebook, on Instagram, and so on. Do you manage those channels yourself, or do you have people that help you? How do you go about that? I do. I, I have people to help me with uh, Facebook and stuff. Um, but I'm very active on um, Instagram and, and Twitter, you know. I, um, you know. I try to reply as much as I can to fans. I, I try and stay in touch with them, you know. Um, I think that's awesome, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a great way to really spread the word on something. If you have something to say, you know, if you may have an announcement to make and all that, you don't have to count on, you know, other people. You can go directly to your fan base and you know, tell them if you want to do something exclusive for them, you know. Um, so that's the beauty of it these days, you know. Sure. And on this tour now you have uh, VIP packages. Um, that's a very good example. For We, we do that, you know. We, we do, we offer special fan experiences, you know, VIP experiences. For example, for me, uh, I know, I guess I'm mostly known for being a guitar player, so people want to, you know, uh, they want to see me play guitar. So, uh, you know, I, I give a, a lucky few that you know, that, that chance on every tour. Um, you know, they have the, the, the VIP, we, I call it guitar sessions on this tour. So what that is, is, you know, they get to hang out with me for half an hour and we play and I, you know, I show them stuff, licks and tricks and whatever they want to know. We hang out, you know, I give them, a, you know, a rig rundown of what I use on stage and stuff to explain my rig and stuff with my guitar tech. 
and all these kind of cool things, you know. Um, and people love that. They love that, you know. They they uh, they really get a chance to see what you know, they, they, you know, an inside to your own world. And, and uh, I'm happy if they're happy. Perfect, great. Where do you see the business model of the music industry going? How do you see what's what's in the future? Your personal opinion, of course. Yeah. Hard to say, really. I, I think the music industry has been into a transi transitional, um, ongoing transitional period for quite a while now. So I really don't know where this is going to go. Um, um, I think good music will always exist. You know, people will always, uh, you know, we will, al we will always hear good music. Um, there will always be artists with passion out there that strive for this. Uh, and there will always be you know, music lovers and supporters, without a doubt, you know. Maybe it's getting a bit more of a, you know, less of a, more of a closer circle of those people, but I think as long as that is around, you will still have albums, you will still have, you know, cool tours like this, you, you will still, you know, you will still have the, the, the rock and roll shows, you know, the experience. So, um, I really don't see where, I, I don't know, I don't know where it's gonna go in terms of sales and all that stuff, I, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, if, that stuff is not, almost non-existent these days, you know? Um, so it's hard to say for me, I don't know. I'm, I'm, what I do is I'm just kind of like sitting in my own corner, observing what's happening and I'm just adapting, really. I don't, I don't bitch about it, you know, I just adapt it, embrace it, and uh, you, know, you go out there and uh, play. Sounds like a great plan. Well, mm. all the best for the future, Gus. Thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. And see you again.